Shot in 4K Ultra High Definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Will we get to see the eclipse here or will it be too cloudy? I'll show you what it will look like this afternoon where you are. A large police presence at a gas station in Fayetteville after reports of a shooting. Coming up, I'll tell you what we're still trying to learn from police. And all eyes are on the sky today as people across the country wait to see the eclipse this afternoon. WRL's Laura Levine will join us live to tell us about a watch party happening in the Triangle. And police are outside of Dick's Park this morning as crews are cleaning up after Dreamville. Coming up when the park should reopen. What a weekend it's been. Mm -hmm. Wow, 4.30 everybody. Monday feels a little anticlimactic, but we have the eclipse. Hello everyone, I'm Renee Chu. I'm Jeff Hogan. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been exciting from Friday, Saturday, yeah. you know, Dreamville, Dreamville basketball, basketball, and now eclipse. More basketball tonight, unfortunately. We don't have local Just teams. Just without in the it. red in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Elizabeth Carter is over the WRS Severe Weather Center. That'll be the question today, Elizabeth. Will we see it? So we'll be able to see potentially the partial eclipse. The big question is how much cloud cover will there be? As you're stepping out the door this morning, you'll notice the temperatures are on the cool side, 45 degrees, and it's mostly clear currently. We have a little disturbance that's going to come rolling in. It's 36 in Roxborough, 37 in South Hill, 45 Southern Pines, and in Clinton. So have a wide range in our temperatures. And for the most part, it's warmer than it was this time yesterday. For uh, the Triangle area down towards Southern Pines, it's eight degrees warmer than it was this time yesterday. High pressure is still in control of our weather. So this morning it's nice and clear, but watch this little disturbance swinging through. At lunchtime, our northern counties begin to cloud up. There's two o'clock. It begins at two and peaks at 315. So we'll pause it right there at 315. And this version of Futurecast is showing Durham, Rocky Mountain northward with some cloud cover and maybe a quick sprinkle from the Triangle area southward. It's looking more clear. So it may depend on where you are. Potentially, our southern counties will have a better chance of seeing clear enough skies to take a peek at the eclipse. Our temperatures this afternoon really start to warm up. We'll see highs in the 70s and 70s for the remainder of the week. We do have a better chance for rain later this week. I'll show you when coming up. Elizabeth, thanks. We're working to learn more about a reported shooting at a speedway in Fayetteville. The WRL breaking news tracker was on the scene as police investigated. Here's Nick Perlin with what we know so far. I'm here at the Fayetteville Police Department where we're trying to learn more about what led up to a reported shooting. Now take a look at this video. This is from around 11 p.m. last night. You can see Fayetteville Police investigating the area around this speedway on Grove Street. Right now we're trying to find out what happened, if anyone was hurt, and if police have made any arrests. Once we have more information, we'll be sure to update you. In Fayetteville, Nick Perlin, WRL News. Eclipse Day is here and everyone in the U.S. will have a chance to see the moon at least partially blocking the sun as long as there's no cloud cover. WRO's Laura Levine joins us live this morning. Moorhead Planetarium is the place in Chapel Hill. They're throwing a, a solar eclipse celebration there today and you look ready to go, Laura. Hey, good morning, Jeff. I'm ready. We're still several hours away, but might as well get some practice in. If you know anything about these glasses, you know I can't see a single thing. But yes, here at the Moorhead uh, Planetarium in Chapel Hill, they're going to have a watch party here. This is just one of several locations that are going to have people take part in this astronomical event. So this is what it'll all look like. The moon will block out the sun, giving us that total solar, solar eclipse. And during a total eclipse, the moon completely covers the sun. The sun's corona is only visible at 100% obstruction, which is only possible inside that path of totality. The path of totality is up to 123 miles wide as it moves northeast from Mexico to eastern Canada. So no here in North Carolina. We're not in that path. However, we could still possibly see a partial eclipse. So Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center here will hold free outdoor events, including uh, solar observing and hands-on astronomy activities. They'll have a live stream of the eclipse from a totally uh, meteorite activities and special eclipse themed screening. So a lot going on here. The extent of totality will be as long as four minutes and 27 seconds. Uh, people are traveling far and wide to see this and they have a right to do so. You know why? Because the next time we'll see this will be in 20 years. Laura Levine, WRL News, live in Chapel Hill. 
Let's make the most of this one. There are important things to keep in mind during the eclipse to keep your eyes safe. Do not use regular sunglasses, no matter how dark. They will not protect your eyes when viewing the eclipse. Safe solar viewers are thousands of times darker and ought to comply with what's called the ISO 12312-2 international standard. So that's a very long string of numbers. Take a look at it there on your screen. NASA does not approve any particular brand of solar viewers, by the way. And remember, we are not in the path of totality, so you need to keep your eclipse viewers on the entire time you are looking at the eclipse. You can watch special coverage of the eclipse right here on WREL with NBC Nightly News anchor Lester Holt live in Indianapolis. The world's largest viewing site for this solar event is right there. NBC News correspondents will be positioned all along the path of totality. You can watch two hours of special coverage this afternoon at 2 o'clock and look for a preview on NBC News Daily at 1 p.m. all on WRL. There will be extra security at Benningfield High School in Wilson County after someone posted a threat to the school. A post on the school's Facebook page says law enforcement is investigating. It says the school is aware of the threat that's circulating social media. Dreamville Festival 2024 ended last night with J. Cole, the festival's creator, wrapping up the two-day event. WRL's Kelsey Coffey joins us live from Dick's Park. Lots of cleanup to do today after a busy weekend, but they got a pretty good jump on it in the last few hours. Jeff, police cars are outside of just about every entrance at Dick's Park this morning. Police are making sure that people stay out of this area as crews are cleaning up. Crews have been working on that cleanup process for nearly five hours, and Dick's Park is set to reopen later this morning. Sky 5 flew over the crowd at Dick's Park during the festival. It wrapped up just after midnight yesterday with J. Cole headlining. Dreamville brings thousands of people from all over the country to Raleigh. That means a huge economic boost for the area. Last year's festival brought in $145 million to the local economy. More than 100,000 people showed up to last year's Dream Bill. Organizers are predicting that this year will top that. We already plan the next year, so when they, <laughs> when they drop saying Dream Bill is coming again, we're coming. A lot of folks are anticipating next year's lineup already, and Dick's Park should reopen this morning at 6 o'clock. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News. Live in Raleigh. A woman is facing charges after a hit and run at a Chipotle restaurant in Fayetteville. This happened Saturday night on Ramsey Street. Surveillance video showed a car crashing into a restaurant. Some people who were inside were hurt. Officers found the damaged car at a nearby home, home on Bain Drive. Police arrested 27-year-old Brianna Black on charges of reckless driving and four counts of hit and run. Work has started to remove containers from the cargo ship that hit Key Bridge in Baltimore. Officials say removing the containers will allow crews to safely remove parts of the bridge that fell onto that ship. The operation is expected to continue through the week. Maryland Governor Wes Moore says the goal is to reopen the Port of Baltimore by the end of May. The Wolfpack's men's basketball team is home this morning after the NCAA Final Four loss in Arizona. Their fans gave them a warm welcome when they returned to Raleigh. Fans tell WRL they could not be more proud of this team. Some fans waited over an hour at the Dale Basketball Center on campus to get a glimpse of the ACC tournament champs. The last time NC State won the national championship was in 1983. I'm 43 years old, so I was three when they won in 83, and I was six or seven when they won the ACC title, so I don't remember those things. So this was, you know, my once, once in a lifetime thing to see them do a run like this, and it's just been awesome. Fans tell WRL the team should be proud of a great season and use this momentum to work hard and possibly win the NCAA tournament next year. Knockout round of The Voice begins tonight, and Goldsboro native Tay Lewis will take the stage. Lewis will be performing Nothing on You by Cody Johnson. He'll face fellow Team Reba member Asher Havon. The Voice airs at 8 o'clock tonight on WRAL. An investigation is underway in Milwaukee after body parts were found scattered in a neighborhood. 
it's all like it's connected in a way to me because it's like body parts are appearing all around the city. We'll hear from neighbors who say authorities have been searching the area for days now. Caitlin Clark is moving on from college basketball, but not before setting another record. We'll tell you about her latest achievement. And here's a live look at Zebulon. We have nice temperatures ahead for today. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner will tell us about that and if we'll have a clear sky to watch the eclipse. From the WRAL Severe Weather Center, North Carolina's most experienced team of meteorologists. 443 and it's a cool morning out there 41 degrees in Wilson it's 45 and Durham at 47 in Fayetteville right now our skies are clear but of course the big question is will it be clear this afternoon at three o'clock when we see uh, the peak of the eclipse here in our area and we're going to take another closer look at that coming up in just a little bit we will see some increase in our cloud cover for today especially in our northern counties a chilly start with temperatures in the mid 40s but we're likely to see a warmer start tomorrow morning and some really nice pleasant temperatures as we get through the rest of the week after a pretty cool weekend. So we're in the 40s this morning. By lunchtime, we climbed to 68 and then into the mid to upper 70s this afternoon. And that'll be about 10 degrees warmer than we saw yesterday. As we get toward the middle of the week, our chances of rain go up. I'll show you coming up. Happening today, former President Donald Trump plans to announce his potential abortion policy. In a post on Truth Social, Trump says he believes in exceptions of abortion for rape, incest and the life of the mother. Today's announcement comes after a Florida ruling upheld the state's ban on abortions after 15 weeks. Raleigh police say there is no threat to the public after a disgruntled Walmart customer called in a bomb threat. Police say they investigated the threat that was made to the New Hope Church Road Walmart. Raleigh police found the threat was not credible. The store was back under normal operations by 6 p.m. Sunday. A firefighter is recovering after being injured while putting out a house fire in Cumberland County. Officials say that they believe that that firefighter suffered minor burns. Video from the WRL breaking news tracker shows the extensive damage to the home on Persimmon Road. Crews say it was a total loss. The Red Cross is helping two adults who lived at that home. More human remains were found in a Wisconsin neighborhood on Friday and Saturday, less than a week after someone found a human leg inside a Milwaukee park. Deputies were searching an area near a park and nearby train tracks overnight. Body parts were first found Friday in a neighborhood in the area. And then on Saturday, police were called a few blocks away for reports of more human remains being found. A human leg was found on Tuesday at a park in the city and people who live in that area are shocked just really brings into question what is wrong with people. I mean, it's, it's heinous. The sheriff's office is investigating the severed leg as a homicide. A person of interest is in custody. Deputies have not said if the other body parts are connected to that case. A WRAL 5 on your side investigation is making national and international headlines and was featured on NBC Nightly News. For nearly five months, Five on Your Side has tracked the number of cancer cases in people who spent time in Poe Hall. The NC State Education Hall was shut down last fall after toxic chemicals, PCBs, were found inside. As of Sunday, the list of people who worked or studied in Poe Hall and were later diagnosed with cancer has reached 164. Many of the people with cancer tell WRAL News that they are frustrated the university is not investigating those cases of cancer. I love this university. I really do love this university. And so let's not let's work together to not let this sort of be a stain on our reputation. Are you worried about the reputation of this university? I'm, I'm not worried about the reputation of this university because I know we're doing the right thing. But people can get tested. NC State Chancellor Randy Woodson says chemical testing of Poe Hall should be completed by the end of this month. Experts warn it's difficult to link cases to chemicals found in buildings, but it's not unheard of. The University of South Carolina women's basketball team defeated the Iowa Hawkeyes and Caitlin Clark clinching the national championship. But Clark set a few more records on her way out the door. The Iowa Hawkeyes star erupted in the first quarter of the national championship game against South Carolina. Clark scored 18 points in the first 10 minutes of the game. That's the most points ever scored by a player in a single quarter of a championship game. In the regular season home game, the Carolina Hurricanes were able to bring home a win with the Canes beating the Columbus Blue Jackets 3-zip. 
Last night's win marks fourth win in five games for the Canes. The team now hits the road for their last four games, and they'll play on home ice in about two weeks as they get the Eastern Conference playoffs started. If you're still looking for the perfect spot to watch the solar eclipse today, how about over at Campbell University? The school's Astronomical Society is hosting a public viewing event this afternoon at 2. The club and the physics department will have several filtered telescopes set up for people to use, and this is happening in front of the Pope Convocation Center. 448 now and uh, clear skies out there and feeling nice, a little on the chilly side, but we are going to warm up quickly, Elizabeth. Yeah, big warm up starts today and continues for the rest of the week and into next weekend. We take a live look at Zebulon this morning. We have clear skies here in front of the historic town hall. 45 degrees is the temperature, which is actually normal for this time of year. We're going to see those temperatures climbing along with our afternoon highs. So we're going to move it back above normal for this afternoon and the rest of the week. Expect 40s this morning up until around 9 a.m or so. So it is a cool start. We'll see temperatures climbing into the 60s by lunchtime and into the 70s for highs later on this afternoon. Well, let's uh, take a look at our tower. We have the top of the tower lit in blue for clear skies this morning, but we will end up with some cloud cover rolling in this afternoon. We take a live look at temperatures, looking at mid to upper 30s in Roxborough and South Hill, mid 40s in the Triangles, 41 in Rocky Mount, 45 in Clinton and in Southern Pines this morning. Around town, a lovely 77 in Raleigh, 77 in Durham, 79 in Fayetteville. Our northern counties are likely to see more cloud cover around the time of the eclipse, eclipse this afternoon. Um, it peaks here at about 315. Our southern counties look like we'll have a better chance of seeing some sunshine. We've had the cool temperatures over the weekend, and we'll see the warmer air starting to move in. The yellow and orange color contours are where we're seeing temperatures above normal. So we'll continue to see that really for the bulk of the week. It may not be way above normal, but definitely looking above normal through the end of this week. Our normal high is 70 this time of year, so we're at least starting to see those temperatures ramping up this time of year. Uh, the coolest day, 71 on Friday. Otherwise, expect mid to upper 70s for the bulk of the week. But again, we do turn slightly wetter as well. The warm temperatures will continue even in the mornings. Our normal low is 46, and we're about there this morning. But then we're into the uh, 50s and 60s for morning lows uh, through the middle of the week, and then a little bit cooler over the weekend. And it looks like the trend will continue for the weekend into early next week. We have the potential for above normal temperatures for a huge chunk of the country. Now we do get into a wetter pattern for tomorrow and Wednesday, looking at about a 30 to 40 percent chance of rain. But a cold front comes through on Thursday. That's going to bring us our next best chance for rain and possibly some scattered thunderstorms. So we're going to walk you through that uh, with future casts coming up in just a little while. Eclipse day today. We'll see partly cloudy skies and more clouds in the north, fewer clouds in our southern counties, and then into a slightly wetter pattern. Uh, the wettest day of the week likely to be Thursday. I'll show you how much we could see coming up. Thanks, Elizabeth. While people are preparing to view that solar eclipse today, mm -hmm. others will be getting ready to say, I do. It's just going to be the coolest wedding ever. Coming up, we'll tell you about a mass wedding happening today in Arkansas, where couples will share their vows under the eclipse. Beyonce has made history with her new country album. David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. 16 carriages driving away. Cowboy Carter has debuted number one on the Billboard 200 album chart with the biggest sales week of any album so far this year. It's Beyonce's eighth album to top the chart, and she's the first black woman ever to debut number one on Billboard's top country albums chart. We have to take this case. He's got a gun. A gun! We have got to get the women to safety. Okay, this is exactly what I'm talking this about. This is what she's saying. Gotta look over here. I she's will look at it. Do you even know what it is I do? I'm a stand. The first full trailer is out for Pool Man. Chris Pine makes his directorial debut and leads an ensemble cast including Danny DeVito, Annette Bening, Wanda DeWise, and Jennifer Jason Leigh. Pool Man swims into theaters May 10th. <laughs> More honors for Poor Things. Emma Stone and Mark Ruffalo won Best Actress and Actor in a Science Fiction or Fantasy Movie at the fourth annual Critics' Choice Super Awards. Three other films also picked up two prizes. Tom Cruise and Rebecca Ferguson from Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning were named Best Actor and Actress in an Action Movie. Talk to Me won Best Horror Movie, and its star, Sophie Wilde, received Best Actress in a Horror Movie. And Godzilla Minus One took Best Science Fiction or Fantasy Movie, and 
and Godzilla himself was named Best Overall Movie Villain. In Hollywood, I'm David Dando. Couples who love each other to the moon and back are getting ready for the biggest mass wedding happening under a total solar eclipse. The event is happening today at a soccer complex in Arkansas. Carlotta and Matthew are from Tennessee, and they came early to the venue to get a marriage license and meet like-minded brides and grooms. This is the coolest thing ever, in my mind. It's, it's a once-in-a-lifetime to be able to have this opportunity and elope at the eclipse. Apart from the clothing and a ring, all other expenses are included with two $100 festival tickets for them. <laughs> as long as both parties are down with it, why not? <laughs> Shake Shack is throwing some shade at Chick-fil-A, and you can cash in on the rivalry. The fast food chain announced it will be giving out free fried chicken sandwiches every Sunday in April. It does come at a price. You have to place at least a $10 order to use the promo code Chicken Sunday for your free sandwich. While the chain doesn't explicit, explicitly call out Chick-fil-A by name, the company does say that the goal of the new deal is to, quote, one up a famously closed on Sunday's chicken sandwich fast food chain. Hmm, wonder which one they're talking about. Pretty obvious <laughs> who they're going after. Lady Gamecock fans have plenty to celebrate this morning following the team's clinching of the 2024 NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. I'm feeling good. I just feel so great to be a Gamecock. 75 to and coming up at 5, all the history that was made during the final game of the women's tournament. And we're just hours away from the solar eclipse. WRL's Laura Levine will join us live to tell us about an event happening today to ensure you get a view.